Hey everyone, welcome, I'm Mr. Bo, and in this week's Bungie update, we got a roadmap for July, we got some brand new information about how they're going to be tweaking the Crucible and Crucible ranks, we got some information about how prestige raid layers are going to be working, and we got some information about how collections will be working as well in Forsaken. So let's start off with the July roadmap. So on screen you can see the roadmap for July. July 3rd to July 9th we have the Faction Rally Winners Week, Mayhem Crucible Playlist and Bungie Day. Fingers crossed we get something cool on Bungie Day. They usually do stuff really cool, maybe give us an item. Sometimes it's not so cool so we'll just have to wait and see. We then have Iron Banner and Guardian Con from the week of July 10th to 16th. July 17th is when we'll get the brand new update of 1.2.3 which is where most of these changes that I'm going to be talking about in a minute will go live. We also have the final Faction Rally for Season 3, so if there's anything from Faction Rallies that you want, make sure you go ahead and get it before all the ornaments and stuff turn over into a new set with the start of Year 2. And then July 24th to the 30th, we have the Faction Rally Winners Week, as well as the Doubles Crucible playlist. Now I think the thing most people are looking forward to is the Solstice of Heroes event, which begins on July 31st. We don't have any information about what this event is going to include at the moment. What we do know is that this event is going to be the only place that you can earn 400 power armor before the launch of Forsaken. Now that makes me believe that this could be SRL making a return because obviously in Destiny 1 we saw SRL armor, we didn't see any weapons, so that would make sense as why you can only earn 400 power armor from this event and it's the only way you can do that. Plus I'd really like to see SRL make a return, it's a fun game mode and I think a lot of people would be happy to see that return. So that is all the information we have on that at the moment. They will be updating us leading up to the events in July, so I'll be sure to keep you guys updated. And as soon as we do get some information about what the Solstice of Heroes is, I'll be sure to let you know, and I'll be sure to give you some gameplay of when it's out. So on July 17th, we'll be getting that brand new update, and that is going to be changing quite a few things in the Crucible. Firstly, let's talk about the Crucible playlist updates. So in quick play, they are increasing the player configuration to 6v6 and updating the playlist descriptions. They are removing supremacy from the pool of available game modes. With control, they are updating the control win score to 150 and the control zones will initially be neutral. And then finally with clash, they are updating the win score to 100. Now in competitive, they are changing the bomb fuse timer in countdown and lowering it from 40 seconds to 35 seconds. Finally, overall in general, Rumble will become a full-time playlist, so if you're a fan of free-for-all, you don't have to wait for that to rotate around. And Supremacy will actually be turned into a weekly featured playlist and updated to be 6v6 and to have a win score of 150. So if you really like Supremacy, unfortunately you're going to have to wait for that to rotate around as the weekly Crucible playlist. It will be rotating around on July 17th to July 23rd if you do miss it. Now the big changes with Crucible is the Crucible rank updates. This has been a thing that people have been talking about non-stop, mainly with competitive because it seems a little bit unfair for solo players to queue up and if they lose and lose and lose and lose again, they start losing a lot of points. So here are the changes being made to Crucible ranks. Players will be able to earn Valor rank, which is the quick play rank, from additional playlists including competitive, Crucible labs, Iron Banner and Trials of the Nine. So basically, wherever you play Crucible, you will be earning Valor rank now, even if you're playing competitive. I think this is a great addition. A lot of people had been asking for Valor rank to be enabled during Iron Banner, and they just went, yeah, we'll do that, and we'll also make it available for you in these other game modes as well. Meaning you're probably going to be earning those rewards from Shax a lot quicker. And hopefully with the start of year two, the new stuff that Shax sells, I will actually have a chance to unlock that stuff because I only play competitive really, and obviously I wasn't earning any Valor rank, so that's a good sign. Now along with that, joining a game in progress will actually protect your Valor win streak for that game. So if you join a game halfway through and you lose, you'll incur no penalties, you won't have your win streak reset. However, if you join a game halfway through and you win, well, you'll still win and increase your streak. 
Now, moving on to the glory rank, the competitive ranking system. Firstly, they're going to be changing it so matchmaking is now based on glory rank. That means your opponents will be a similar rank to you, and the higher you climb, the tougher your opponent. Hopefully, this also means your teammates will be the same rank as you as well. Someone like me who solo queued doesn't have a very good time in competitive. I tried my hardest to get the Red Ricks Claymore. I'm sitting at rank 2, about a thousand points, and now when I play, it's literally literally no point in me playing, I'm just losing more games than I am winning, and I've got no one else to play with, so I've kind of just given up any hope of actually getting that gun, which is unfortunate because I would have liked to get it, I'm a fan of pulse rifles, but maybe with these brand new changes and the changes I'm about to go over, I'll hop back in it and maybe have a chance to get the Red Ricks Claymore, if not, hopefully whatever the weapon is at the start of year 2 is just as cool. So the other changes they are making to glory rank is that your glory loss streaks will be retuned to be less punishing over time. Consecutive losses will decrease the rank points lost instead of increasing, though your streaks will still cap out at 5. So if you lose your first game, you'll lose say 10 points. After that, if you lose another game in a row, it'll go down to say 8 points. 3 times in a row, 5 points, 4 times, 3 points, and maybe if you're on a 5 loss streak you'll lose 1 point, and then it'll reset back to 0. However, if you're on a win streak, it will no longer reset once it hits the cap, so if you're on a 5 win streak, it won't then reset back to 1 and you'll earn that 5 again, it'll just keep on going. We don't know if that means the score will keep increasing, or if it just sort of caps it out at that 5 streak, so you'll only earn 50 points continuing on, we'll have to wait and see until we get the full patch notes. Now, from there, let's move on to the prestige raid layers, because we've got a bit of information about how they are changing these to make them a little bit more challenging, and allow you to use weapons, armour and techniques you maybe haven't used before. Now, as I previously mentioned, the only way to get 400 power armour before Forsaken is by participating in the Summer Solstice event. But the only way to get 400 power weapons before Forsaken is by completing the Prestige Spire of Stars and Eater of Worlds raid layer. Every time you complete all the encounters in a Prestige raid layer that week, you'll be rewarded a 400 power raid weapon. This can be any raid weapon from Destiny 2, not just the weapons that drop in that raid layer. Each prestige raid layer also has its own set of unique armor ornaments, hopefully they look a lot better than the previous armor ornaments for the raid, and both raid layers also have a masterwork catalyst that can be found only as a rare drop in the activity. Now each week there is a curated weapon suite and global activity modifier for the Spire of Stars and Eater of Worlds. The weapon set and modifier will be the same across both the activities. So the curated weapon loadouts are based on weapon archetypes. You might see a combination that requires you to equip an auto rifle, an SMG and a sniper rifle. The next week it could be a scout rifle, a hand cannon and a rocket launcher. Loadouts are not locked inside the prestige raid layer, meaning you can bring tons of different guns into a raid layer and swap between them as long as they meet the required curation. For example, if you're doing Spire of Stars and the loadout is Assault Rifle, SMG and Sniper Rifle, you might want to use the Suros Regime for Valkor Phase 1, but then swap to the Ghost Primus for Valkor Phase 2, so you can equip your Darcy for boss damage. I think this is a great change, it means you're going to be using weapons you might have not used before. For instance, if it is a Scout Rifle, Hand Cannon and Rocket Launcher, you don't really use Hand Cannons, but you've got one in your vault that you've never really touched, and it's the only one you've got, well, you're going to have to bring that out and use it, because you're going to need a hand cannon. I think you're going to be seeing a lot of new tactics and strategies come out from this, and I'm excited to see how this will actually work. Now along with the curated weapon loadouts, they're also going to be shipping three activity modifiers that the raid layers rotate between. Two of these modifiers are brand new and were built from the ground up by the raid team to work in the raids. The third is a fan favourite from Destiny 2, and that is Prism. Now each of these modifiers is designed to provide guardians with advantages over their enemies when they lean into it. The goal of using these modifiers and loadouts is to change the way you engage with prestige raiding each week. The first week the modifier and weapon loadout might synergize really well with strategies and armor exotics that you've been using for months. The next week the modifier and weapon loadout might push you to explore the encounter in a different way and use different exotic armor, looking at you Lunar Faction boots. So there you go, that is how prestige raid layers are going to be introduced in. The normal leviathan prestige mode isn't changing, that's staying as it is. It is just these two raid layers that are having prestige mode introduced, and I can't wait to hop in and try these out. Now finally, let's talk about the collection. 
The collection has been something people have wanted for a long time. We obviously had the Kiosk collections in Destiny 1, and it was kind of strange when we didn't see that in Destiny 2, but they are bringing collections back, and here's kind of how they'll work and what you can get from them. So the collections will include all your year one inventory, including weapon, armor pieces, ghost, ships, sparrows, emblems, and shaders available in year one of Destiny 2. If you have an item on you in your inventory right now, you can safely discard it and retrieve it from your collections in September. This does not include, however, this does not include consumables, so hang on to those if they matter to you. Now your collection will begin with every piece of gear you are holding in your inventory or within your vault upon the launch of Warmind. If you had dismantled any item prior to May 8th, it will not be available within your collections. So that means maybe you had the Dawning armor set or the Season 1 armor set from Eververse and you dismantled them a long time ago by mistake. Unfortunately, that won't be in your collection. But if you had that stuff and you deleted it after the Warmind expansion had launched, well, that stuff will then be in your collection. So anything on you currently in-game that you don't want and you are holding out, you can happily just go ahead and delete it and it will be there waiting for you in September. Now of course, with Year 2, we're going to be seeing an introduction of a lot of new gear and an introduction of randomly rolled gear as well. Now because they are adding in randomly rolled gear, it would seem a bit strange if you got to say a randomly rolled weapon that was like the perfect roll for you and you deleted it and then when you went to your collection to pick up that gun it would give you a different roll and you could just keep taking it out of your collection until you got another better roll because of that all year two randomly rolled legendary weapons and armor will not be available in your collection however they are looking at ways to solve this long term for instance Whatever the random roll was on your weapon, that's what it will be in the collection. But that is a solution they are looking at in the long term, we probably won't be seeing that anytime soon. Now they are still working on the current costs for item acquisitions and will have more information at a later date, but they do have two main goals when deciding on the reacquisition costs. Reacquisition isn't a currency sink, we aren't trying to make you spend all of your hard earned glimmer, we just want to make sure the items that you find out in the world still have value. Players won't have to deal with currency conversions, for example, if a shader dismantles into Glimmer, it costs Glimmer to reacquire. If the shader came from Eververse, it will dismantle into Bright Dust, and therefore cost Bright Dust to reacquire. The same goals are true for all collection items. Now they've been getting a lot of questions about shaders, you know, how will that work? If I delete a shader, how do I get it back? Are they going to be free? Am I going to have to spend Glimmer on them? Can I just buy a ton of them? What they can say is that they will have a cost to reacquire from collections, but there will no longer be a cost to apply shaders to gear. For instance, you're out in the world and a shader drops for you. You can then apply that to your armor for no cost. But if you want to apply that to all of your armor, you'll have to go to your collection and then spend some glimmer to actually get enough of those shaders to put on your armor. And the final question about collections is what power level would this stuff come out at? Collection items will come out close to your current power level but will require infusion to be ready for endgame activities. This is a delicate balance of making sure collections don't create a leveling exploit, but still providing items that are usable right away in most activities. There you have it, that is a lot of information. Again, we'll be getting more information as we lead up to the update on July 17th. We'll then get patch notes and be able to hop into game and test a lot of this stuff out, see how the Crucible ranking works. Obviously, collections are not coming until Forsaken launches, so we'll have to wait a little bit longer for that. And then we have the Solace of Heroes event beginning on July 31st, which I'm pretty excited for. So let me know what you guys think of all of this information in the comments below. I know it's a pretty long video. What do you think the Solace of Heroes event is? Would you like it to be SRL or would you like it to be something completely brand new? What do you think of the changes to Crucible and the Crucible ranking system? Does this make you want to hop into competitive and actually have a go now knowing that you won't actually sort of lose as much if you're on a loss streak and your opponents will be evenly matched? Are you going to be hopping into those prestige raid layers to give them a go to earn the 400 power weapons? And are you excited to see collections make a comeback with the Forsaken expansion? As always, if this has been an informative video or if you've enjoyed it, feel free to give the like button a big old hug, subscribe for more gaming content and coverage, Boop that bell so you're notified when my future videos go live so you never miss them. Hopefully you guys have an awesome day, thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye.